My name is Lizzie Watson. I'm a PhD student in psychology and I research the way that children view the world around them. I've got an example here of one of my studies that I use EEG for, which is electroencephalography. And that's where we measure the electrical activity produced by the brain. So the, I've got some example stimuli that I use on here. I'm really interested in how five-year-old children are integrating objects and context and how they might be understanding that a little bit differently to adults. So one way we can look at this is look at how the brain activity reacts to objects in weird and unexpected places. For the examples I've got here, you can see we've got like this little kitchen area and then We've got a, um, a pan lid, which looks quite normal, but if a clock was to appear in the place of that pan lid, that would be quite weird. And what the brain does when it sees an unexpected item, we see this kind of negative activity. This is some adult data that I collected, averaged all together to kind of get this very specific waveform. This is across the span of 700 milliseconds, so we can see that we've got these clear differences in activity and those kind of components are related to what we call predictive coding so how we expect or anticipate our environment hi i'm alice i'm a phd student my topic is memory research we're interested in looking at autobiographical memories of people either specific events so i remember my birthday party last year or repeated events so i remember my birthday parties as a child a word would come up on a screen usually in mri scanners you've got a little mirror and that reflects the screen in the room and then that's how you see any stimulus that appears for the task the participant would see a word and then they were prompted to think about a specific or a repeated event in their life and then just think about that memory and later on we also asked them how detailed that memory was so we were interested in seeing what brain regions activate and have a positive relationship with the amount of details we recall so what regions are really specific for the rich retrieval of our own autobiographical memories